Welcome to Taconica, the Java tutorial channel. Today, we will learn about what are the new features added in the Java 10 version. Java 10 is released on uh, March 20th of 2018. JDK 10 is actually a short term release and the upcoming JDK 11 will be a long term support. Normally Oracle releases LTS that is long term support releases uh, uh, every 3 years. And also one more thing uh, that is interesting is that after Java 9 was released, the naming convention of Java that is uh, like it had been Java 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, they wanted to change it from that uh, formatting to an year and month format. That means uh, the Java released in this month will be uh, Java 18.3 that is 2018 in March. But uh, that was scrapped and uh, finally Java 10 is here uh, and it's not Java 18.3 instead Java 10. The new Java is here and Java 9 is already outdated. Java 9 came with so many new features like modularity, the, uh, the project Jigsaw, uh, many improvements in Lambda expressions and so many things, the JShell Ripple sessions. And it was a wonderful release compared uh, with the earlier releases. So it is already outdated because Java 10 is available for download from Oracle now. You can go to the Oracle site and you can see the Java 10 JDK. So let's discuss what are the major changes or major features in the JDK 10. Parallel full garbage collector for G first. Uh, this is related to garbage collection improvements. Actually, G first, that is G1, uh, was added as the default garbage collector in Java 9. Uh, that is the uh, previous. The G1 garbage collector was actually designed to avoid full collections. But when the concurrent collections can't reclaim the memory fast enough, a fallback full uh, garbage collection will occur. That means uh, we cannot avoid uh, a full uh, garbage collection sometimes. So at those times, uh, it is better to have a parallel garbage collection. Uh, the garbage collector that we used prior to G first was a parallel garbage collection. So uh, in Java 10, the algorithm for uh, uh, full garbage collection in G first is modified so that it uses the same number of thread which is used for the young and uh, old collections uh, in garbage collection. If you are uh, not familiar with the terms of garbage collection or uh, what are the improvements in G1, uh, we will do a session on this improvement itself, how uh, JDK 10 is handling this improvement later. This is a notable improvement in JDK 10 that is the local variable type inference. Uh, if you remember, uh, sorry, if you are familiar with um, another, uh, some other programming languages like uh, Scala or uh, even JavaScript, the type inference is there. In Java also it is there. Uh, first of all, what is a type inference? It is the ability of the Java compiler to look at each method invocation and smaller version of this was already present in Java. If you remember the diamond operator, like uh, uh, if you declare a array list, list uh, of integer is equal to new array list, then I'll give the diamond operator and function. So in the right hand side, I'm not uh, specifying that it is an integer array list. This uh, uh, data type is actually inferred by the compiler. Uh, this is not actually much used inside Java only for some selected functions has been using but in languages like uh, Scala or C sharp it, they have already embraced this uh, local type inference. Java is nearly the only popular statically typed language that has not embraced this local variable type inference. So uh, now you can uh, write this local variables like uh, uh, a reserved keyword is there with the var var. So I can declare a array list like var list is equal to new array list of string function. So uh, I'm declaring uh, in right hand side that it is a string 
uh, string array so in left hand side i need not specify the data type of the variable this uh, if you are uh, using javascript and all it's always like that we if you declare a variable you can assign uh, that variable give the data type of the variable which is it assigned to so such a local variable type in inference is added in jdk 10 there are some limitations and uh, the restrictions for using this thing uh, we will take that in a later session next is the application class data sharing uh, to understand what is application class data sharing first we should understand class data sharing uh, class data sharing means uh, when JVM starts there is a shared archive file uh, that is created by the JRE while we are installing a JRE it decompiles some of the jar files and uh, make uh, a private internal representation uh, of this and dumps that representation to a file called shared archive so uh, when a JVM machine starts it uses this uh, shared archive and loads the classes from there so the startup time of JVM will be significantly increased because restoring the shared archive is faster than loading the classes itself but uh, this uh, this was introduced actually in JDK 5 and uh, many modifications were made in, throughout JDK 8 and 9, uh, 9. Uh, but uh, now what they are doing is they are adding application classes also for data sharing that means uh, uh, in java 10 to improve startup and footprint extended the existing class data sharing feature to allow application classes to be placed in the shared archive so now we can uh, place the application classes as well to the shared archive file which is created by the JRE at the time of installation. Next is the root certificates. Uh, actually, uh, we have this versions uh, Open JDK and Oracle JDK. Open source, uh, uh, actually, Oracle open source the root certificates in Oracle's Java SC root CA program. Uh, this is part of an overall effort to make the open JDK and the Oracle JDK builds the same. Uh, consolidated uh, the the next feature is uh, it consolidated the JDK forest into a single repository. Uh, JDK forest means uh, actually in JDK 9 uh, there were uh, eight repositories used uh, for uh, JDK code. Uh, this code is broken into many mercurial repositories. So this mercurial repositories means small small repositories. repositories. Uh, there were eight of them. The root, uh, the Corba, the hotspot, uh, the Java API for XML processing the java api for xml web services the jdk the lang tools and the nash on the javascript engine so there were eight of these repositories even though multiple repositories offer some advantages it does a poor job supporting various desirable source code management operations so now these eight repositories have been combined into a single repository in Java that is the Java H. This header generation tool why we removed is because in JDK 9 uh, the Java C the Java compiler uh, superseded the functionality uh, of this Java. The Java 9 release provide the ability to write the native headers files at the time the Java source code is compiled thereby eliminating the need of the separate tool. So now in Java 10 uh, because this uh, separate tool is not required, they have removed this Java H2 which has been there since uh, some heap allocation on alternate memory devices. Now this is an interesting feature which is added in Java 10. Uh, this feature actually tells that Java is aiming for the future. Uh, for understanding this feature, we should understand uh, some of the improvements that has been happening in the uh, electronics field actually. Uh, there is a non-volatile dual inline memory module for example 
this is a non volatile memory uh, and it's very cheap so the future systems uh, will be equipped with uh, heterogeneous memory architectures means they'll be having many type of memory devices the dram will be there the non volatile dual inline memory there is the nvdimm will be there <coughs> So Java, while looking for the future, has added the heap allocation in alternate memory devices. Uh, that means Java 10 enables the Java hotspot to allocate the object on alternate memory devices specified by the user. Shorter start times in JSHL Ripple. If you have used this uh, JSHL sessions in Java 9, you will notice that uh, if you type the JSHL command, it will take two, th two to three seconds to give the welcome message. So this is because most of the startup time and interactive delay in snippet was in snippet analysis, which consists mostly of uh, compilation. So JDK 10 reuses the compiler instances and thereby speeding up the compilation. So we got a shorter start time in JShell. Next is the API for creating unmodifiable connections. See this uh, Java 10 has added some new functions like a copy of uh, for list, set.copy of for sets, map.copy of for maps. So what these functions will do is they will all return a mod unmodifiable list. This is just a shallow copy. We will have some POC on what are the changes of this once we get an idea suitable for JDK 10. And we will have a session on that. Also, there has been some improvement in the bytecode generation for enhanced the for loop. Uh, they have improved by providing an improvement in the translation approach. Also added uh, uh, support for multiple style sheets in Java Doc. Uh, now you can use a add style sheet command and you can use uh, different style sheets for the generated documentation in Java. Also the existing uh, command uh, style sheet file has been modified to the main style sheet so that we can distinguish between a main style sheet and an alternate style sheet. Also a clean garbage collector interface was introduced in Java 10 so that uh, to improve the source code I, I a clean garbage collector interface would make it much easier to implement new collect. Also the thread local handshakes. Uh, this introduced a way to execute a callback on threads without performing a global virtual machine uh, safe point. So these are the basic overview of uh, uh, the features in JDK in just 50. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you like this video. Uh, please share your comments below. Thank you.